But it was like he inverted a bottle of Robitussin before he got on the boat. You know what I mean? Yeah, he did. And then we learn, <laughs> because we get a little sea rat history right out of the gate here. Oh, he yeah. He comes from a home of abuse uh, and, and drunken parents. And I hate to say this, Dylan, but uh, we know. <laughs> yeah. Welcome aboard another brand spanking new season of another Below Deck podcast. My name is Dylan. I'm settled up next to one Patrick Hickey. Permission to come aboard. Granted, Kalen is fired. We didn't fire him. <clears throat> A tear shed for Kalen. I know that everybody missed his laugh, or they're going to miss his laughter. But uh, but the kid had a, a sandwich problem, and we can't have people like that around this operation. Mm-hmm. That's fair, right? Yeah. I mean, he deleted two episodes. That's it. Kaputs. And also, we're kidding. He, his wife is mad at him for working, I think. We didn't fire him. <laughs> he quit. <laughs> okay, so uh, we have a new season to get into. Also, quick public service announcement. Um, did we say our names? Yeah, we did at the top. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Frazier interview is out. Hope everybody's enjoying it. Um it's free on it's this feed. It's free. Um, and yeah, it's everywhere. Um, loved Frazier so much. He was very candid. Um, and we just had a we just had a gay old time with him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some of our best work. I think so. Mm-hmm. Are you being pachichish? Or? Not at all. Yeah, no. I think it's some of our best work. Oh, and you know what? If you want to see us interview him, go to our YouTube channel, um, Bad TV Podcast, right? Is that the right one? Well, uh, we, we just launched another YouTube channel. It'll be hard to find. We're going to get some, some YouTube videos up there. Um, but it's called Another Below Deck Podcast. Um, Search it out if it lands on a YouTube channel called Real Nick Davis. You know, you might be a little confused, but, you know, that's just how the <laughs> algorithm works. But we'll sort it out. We'll uh, figure it out. Um, but the important news here is that we're here to break down a brand new season of Below Deck Mediterranean with none other than Captain Sandy herself. Mm-hmm. Captain Leadership Conference, Captain Timeshare. Yes, yeah. she's back. Yeah. And you know, in my when I give my thoughts and knots, um, the audience is going to be quite surprised that I will be one of her biggest advocates in this whole mess up with the MCU and how do you let a guy on board that... The think, Marvel Cinematic Universe? Uh, no, I, I don't even know what the uh, what it stands for, but it's very important and they can shut you down if, right, you, don't have the, right. if you don't have your originals. They're like John Taffer. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, they're like that. They're like that, but for boats. Mm-hmm. Uh, any other public service announcements we have? To uh, Love is way? Blind. Uh, go to patreon.com slash another podcast network. We drop our next three episodes this weekend. Yep. It's pretty phenomenal television. Uh, as always, Nick and Vanessa, although they're both alcoholics, they do a pretty good job producing that show for Netflix. Uh, when we do the show, I will give this fan credit, but Izzy said uh, he loves to dance and then also said that his mom didn't let him do because he was a mormon there there's a little bit of uh, they're all liars on the show yeah they're all fucking liars so anyways that is a great time uh join us at patreon.com if you would like to hear that golden bachelor starts thursday on the bad tv feed that is going to be a blast um and we're going to get to some itunes ratings and reviews later on in the episode i know you guys want us to get into the show right now but itunes ratings and reviews we'll take a little break for that later uh, let's get into it. Pat, thoughts and pots for this first episode. Okay. Let me just say this. I what th- flavor are you sucking on? Oh, it's a new flavor. It's called blackberry. Well, I'm, that's not a new flavor. It's not a new one? They no. have cher- black cherry, don't they? Oh, is blackberry a new flavor? I think so. All right, let me take a lick. Okay. I don't think you're going to like it. Probably not. Do not like it. Mm-hmm. What is wrong with beer? What is wrong with light beer? What happened to... It fills me up too much and makes me sleepy. There's some chemicals that they put in this white cl- stuff that <laughs> yeah. keeps me up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I could you know, drink a bunch of them. You it know? is. It's like the Mountain Dew of beer. Yeah. 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 It's really gross. So I'm back on the okay. claw sauce. Good. Mm-hmm. Okay. So not very often on Below Deck, and Dylan and I have been covering this show for quite some time, is there an original first episode? It's generally you meet the new crew. And uh, that's about it. First and then, episodes usually suck. It sucks. This one had 
Intrigue. Oh, okay. Uh, it had some twists and turns. Uh, we have uh, in, in a new character, I think his name's Ruin. Yeah, like the god of Scadrial. Oh, my God. Oh, by the way, fun little news. I have to say allegedly at this, uh, we had uh, uh, some listeners uh, that happened to be Yachty's reach out to me this morning and uh, share a little information about Ruan. I don't want to destroy that guy's career because it is all just hearsay at this point. But I think he's done that already, though. You know, you might as well just, uh, you know, if a house is on fire and it's like, really on fire. You could throw a cup of car, like a little Dixie cup of kerosene on it. Mm, that's true. Well, let's just say uh, these people had uh, not so nice things to say about Ruin having worked with him or know people that worked with him. So, uh, sure. Uh, I don't know how he thought he was going to get away with this. Um, I guess we're still kind of trying to understand how this is all going to unravel. But Luca put it perfectly. It's like if you get pulled over and you just pull out a eight and a half by eleven photocopy of your license, the cop's going to be like. And it's not you, it's a 40-year-old bald man, <laughs> which I think I saw in the yeah, background. Yeah. All right, so that was phenomenal. If you're white, you'll be scolded with a finger point. Yeah. Now, um, oh, a little tease here. Possibly. Wait, no, what am, I'm not going to tease a C-Rad interview. Okay. Uh, we interviewed Frazier, and one of the things that he gave us during that uh, wonderful interview was, if you're a Chief Stew or a Bosun or Captain Sandy, you don't choose who works on that boat. They show up, and part of the fun is uh, them catching the camera crew, catching the cast members, or, or the workers on the boat, scramble to try and find glasses and drawers. Uh, and so it's we can't fault Captain Sandy for ruin and what took place here. It was her that she was informed that that was uh, a question, that guy was in question, mm -hmm. and then I think she did the right thing. So Captain Sandy, this is a rarity, but thumbs up for you. Okay, Uh the, as far as this episode, though, I have to say I was overwhelmed with the number of cast members. I can't keep track of everybody that all the sea rats on the boat. It's like a clown car. It was. I can't believe you gave Captain Sandy a thumbs up. Well, I thought she handled it well. Uh, le don't worry. I'll, I'll go after yeah, Sandy. Please don't have that be the last. <clears throat> I don't want to start the season off like that. I understand. I understand, but very I got to call it. It's very unsettling. I got to call it how I see it. All right. Okay, uh, Chef uh, Chef Jack, I can't I can't understand a damn thing that he says. But he's he a, a fucking scouser. But he is charming as hell. Uh, I can't wait to hear what Dylan has to say. You know how they food. say fuck? How? Fuck. Really? Yeah. I'd need a subtitle for that. Yeah, can't understand it. Well, okay. Anyway, Fuch. wonderful episode. I don't know some of these. I guess when Kyle shows up, they're going to throw some of these sea rats off the boat or something. Oh, I, it's going to be a wild season. There's like 19 of them here. But yeah. anyway, wonderful episode. Uh, I give it a 80 knots. Great start. Um, uh, I'm going to give it 80 knots as well. Ruin, the most bizarre character we've ever had on this show. Um, someone who was here for a flash uh, was, you know, uh, Catch Me If You Can? Of course. It was kind of like a bad version of that, you know, because there was no, like, trysts with Amy Adams or any success with the fraud, mm -hmm. you know? But um, it was entertaining. It was um, kind, kind of a whirlwind. I mean, the guy gets on. He's We'll talk about it, but he's got the, the friend passing away. I mean, you're just like, what is going on? He, throws, like a, uh, he throws spears at fucking fish for a mm -hmm. living. Oh, is that what he does? Yeah. Well, before he got before he went into yachting, that's what he said his career was. I don't think he get paid a lot to do that. Mm, probably not. It's kind of hot, though. I think. Love like sexually. Yeah, I think people are like, "Oh, wow, you make a career spearing fish." Yeah. Yeah, hot. If you want to like live in squalor, yeah, you know, and do a lot of drugs. Anyways, we're gonna get into the whole thing. I give it eighty pots. Let's go. It's a beautiful day to go boating. Yes, it is. Well, we're in the Italian Riviera, Dylan. Of course it is. We're in Genoa, and we cut back to Sandy's days in Genoa. She's rocking her sporty spice look. Uh, I love that hairstyle. <laughs> uh, Natalia hits the boat first. She is the thoughty with readers. Uh, the season is already a shit show, obviously, because every season has to begin um, with... It's like, um, you know how Commodus stabbed Maximus before their mm, final bout? Of course. Every season of Below Deck is like if he chopped his foot off, 
you know? Yeah. And then they went He's not going to do good. Right. He's just not going to do good. So that's what this season is like. Toomey and Kyle have gotten caught up in immigration and or customs. I, w- I wasn't sure what was going on with those two. I, I don't know how this happens. I don't know how much is planned. I don't know how much is just haphazard, sea rat, sloppy shit. But it always seems as though there is this floor of... Um, uh, uh, there's this floor of standard work and behavior that is beneath the fucking ocean. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just wild how sloppy this is. Yeah, but it makes for great television. Uh, did you mention that when Natalia came in, uh, she hit Sandy up with some flattery. She's like, oh, the white caprice. Yeah. Have, uh, have we ever not seen Sandy in white capris? No, and I admire that about Sandy. I'm going to give her a little kudos uh, too. I, I think that when you find an article of clothing that speaks to you in a way that it, it, it kind of beckons you to choose it as your day-to-day uniform, that's a powerful bond. And to shirk it, it would be impractical. Yeah. I think, I kind of think that uh, she's addicted to wearing them. I think she'd wear them to a wedding. Oh. They're like glued to her. She can't get away from them. 100%. They're like the uh, Siamese twins of apparel. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's like uh, Tobias Fumke, but she, instead of jean shorts, it's white capris. Mm. But we've got more show to talk about. Of course, of course. So, Natalia, because Toomey and Kyle are stuck in an airport somewhere, she's going to get temps. One of the temps will be an heiress to Sprouts I Grocery. Couldn't, is I mean, that Brooke? Just, what, what is going, what is going on? on? I, She's got to be worth fucking $50 million. I don't understand what is going on. Now, I'll say this. If that is, in fact, true, then isn't doesn't that make it so much cooler that she'd go on to just do blue-collar sea rat stuff? No. Hmm. Is my answer. So, uh, let's meet Jack, the uh, the chimney sweep. Um, we see lots of pictures of him and his... His uh, three Lions jersey. I don't know how many Lions they got on the front. They got one star, though. That's it. Uh, the the guy's a fucking uh, uh, a scouser. He's like, uh, you know, he eats like chip buddies. You know, they put fries in between pieces of white bread. They put butter on it, and that's what he likes to eat. So I'm a little concerned about what this guy can churn out, but he does a pretty good job tonight. Okay. I can't wait to hear your critique of him. Yeah, he does. I mean, obviously, we've got, you know, your standard fare. It would be not a premiere episode of Below Deck if we did not have a caprese salad. And we do have a caprese salad. But he might be a talented chef. I mean, you can't understand a single word he says. But um, we meet the chief stew next. Oh, no, No, the the, the bosun. bosun. Excuse me. Ruin. He is um, right off the rip. He's a little too cool for school. He doesn't pass the eye test for me. I thought he was on ketamine when he got on the boat. Yeah, something was... uh Something's going on there. You know? Yeah, a handsome guy, though. Uh, uh, three years as a bosun, he says. Um, he says, being mm-hmm. the operative two yeah. words. Yeah. And my thought when he arrived on the boat, I'm like, oh, wow, he's going to be having sex with a lot of sea rats. Yeah, me too, of course. You know? um, and because uh, he brags that he throws a stick with a knife on the end of it through uh-huh. a fish and turns yeah. it into a kebab well in the last minutes of its life. Yeah. But... Um, a lot of uh, female sea rats think that that's hot. Uh, yeah. Then he, when you um, say a lot of th- female sea rats think that's hot, do you mean to say you think that's hot? Oh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Just c- comes off as kind of dangerous, you know. But it was like he inverted a bottle of Robitussin before he got on the boat. You know what I mean? Yeah, he did. And then we <laughs> learn because we get a little sea rat history right out of the gate here. Oh he yeah, comes from a home of abuse. Uh, and and drunken parents, and I hate to say this, Dylan, but um, we know. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Smooth seas never made a good sailor. Uh, his name is Rue, like Zendaya's Michi on Euphoria, and we're I, I'm I'm kind of happy that we don't have to be confused by that bizarre South African name for the entire season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, because we're Americans. You know, we don't like to be confused about foreign stuff. Exactly. You we're know? just out. Um, Weirds us out. Weirds us out. Oh, weird. Uh, yeah, yeah. Out. I, yeah. I also want to note here. Um, what the fuck is up with bosons? There is a consistency here among bosons, and I don't think it's just this show. Maybe it is. Sea rats, you let me know. 
All right, let's review our last couple. I love where you're going with this. I think I have the psychoanalytical uh, answer. Okay. They're either verbally abusive and or have an alcohol problem, a problem with sex addiction, mm-hmm. and pathological liars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think this is this is the common thread between a lot of bosons. Obviously, see red history, which means pain. Pain. But... There's also a motor. So they've reached the top of of this, whatever you want to call this ladder. So there's a certain amount of healthy aggression to them and uh, and drive. But when you couple that with the sex addiction, the C-RET history, the pain, the alcohol addiction, the lying, you get a person who's really not suited for a seat of power in any way, shape, or form. You know, and that's kind of what I think is going on here because, you know, a lot of men with addiction problems uh, will just kind of relax in squalor until mm-hmm. they're in the floor permanently. But not these bosons. They got enough to get them to the <clears throat> top of the stool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Well, he won't be around for long. Uh, next- no, I mean, he'll get, he'll, he's done this episode. <laughs> uh, next up, we get a trio uh, introduction here. We get Lara. Haley and Jessica. Okay. So Jessica, we'll see you later on in the season. A fairly middling episode from her. The cameras can't capture the magic of everybody in the first episode. Haley and Lara could be the MVPs of this season. Oh, wow. The two of them together, the two of them individually, this double dragon of weirdo wild thornberry and south african dyke i think she prefers yeah, yeah. to be called the dyke they come from two different worlds combined together in this beautiful thing that i think we're going to have on deck i think luca is the perfect person to lead them he doesn't have a chip on his shoulder but we haven't seen enough of luca luca's you know demons may come out eventually well technically by from an occupational standpoint we were never supposed to see Luca. His background is an electrical engineer, Dylan. Not a decky, but right. fuck it. He's too good looking to be stuck with those weird old trolls Dude, down there. Dude, my wife was going... It's it, the, the fucking double standard is so ridiculous. And sure, we talk about... You know, we both think Kate, uh, Kate Blanchett is beautiful. But when my wife sees somebody that she finds attractive, I mean, the, there's no limiter. She's oh. just like, my God, is he gorgeous. I'm like, yeah, no, he is. She's like, he's a little too short, but he's so hot. I'm like, what if he was tall? Then he'd be really fucking hot. I'm like, good God. <laughs> My wife does that to me. She'll like make a sex noise like, ooh. Uh, hey, hey, I'm sitting here. You don't do that to me. Don't make a, ooh. Does that mean that we're not comfortable? Uh, no, I think it's fucking rude, okay? <laughs> the chicks that I think are hot, you'll never know because I go in the bathroom and beat off to them by myself. Have a little respect. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right? <clears throat> anyway, Natalia, very much like your lovely wife, Cecilia, to- takes immediate liking to Luca. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think those two are going to hit it off. Dylan, when we get to Natalia, who claims she's in a relationship at some point, uh, I don't know what the hell that relationship is because... Uh, it's not a relationship. It's uh, an open relationship, which I believe should not be called an open relationship, but... Um, Called dating. Yeah. You're you're dating. Sir. You're just dating. But not even dating because when you're dating, I guess like, I don't know, it's not even as serious as the upper echelon of dating because when you're seriously dating somebody, there is this assumption that you're not going to fuck a bunch of other people. I think it could be, you know, understood if that were to happen. But you'd have serious uh, second thoughts if you did stumble upon that revelation and you were seriously dating somebody. Mm. Help me, I'm in a loop. I'm oh, in a yeah, loop. yeah, yeah, I yeah. All right, well, we'll get some C-Rat background from Haley. Yeah. She's from Philly. Dad raised her to be more like his son he, yeah. that he never had, and he uh, wished she'd drink beer and burp more. And, uh, yep. But she loves beer pong, and also uh, because she's from Philly, enjoys throwing rocks at Santa Claus during yep. the Philly Christmas parade. Batteries, feces, rocks, all at Santa Claus. I don't know why the collective soul of that city is so ill-tempered. They're just angry people. And, and it extends to South Jersey, too. You know, I, the, these people are just... They're all fucking razor blades, mm-hmm. you know? Unbelievable. You got stakes. 
Be happy. Yeah. You got history. You got Be the happy. Eagles. You got the Eagles. You got Jason Kelsey. I mean, isn't that enough? You got Rocky Balboa. Yeah. Okay. Right. By the way, did you know that Philadelphia has the most heavyweight champions from there? Yeah. But they erected a, a statue of Sylvester Stallone. Correct. <laughs> yeah. A fake box. All <laughs> right, right. I love Philly. Yeah, Philly's great. Okay. Uh, Laura says, uh, get all your money done in one month and then piss off. Mm-mm. Do you live in Cambodia? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> you don't make that much no. money in one month. I mean, my God. Uh, you got to string a couple months together. Um, so this season is very different. We've got a commercial built vessel. This vessel is two times bigger than the last one that Sandy captained. I was going to say piloted, but I don't know if that's the right word. Mm -hmm. You know, now the Marvel Cinematic Universe narc is going to be getting on whenever he wants. Okay. And I can't stand these kinds of people, you know, this, this kind of system where it's like health inspectors. But Dylan, Dylan, hold on, hold on, hold on. These are important bureaucracies, okay? Yeah, no, I know. You pointed this out. What did you say? They're the, fucking dorks, though. The health, uh, what is that? Or- How, the health people. Don't you want someone looking out for you? They walk into a restaurant randomly, and they go, hey, open up your freezer, and then they see some pork chops that have hair growing on them. Yeah. We need those kind of administrative bodies to protect the public. Yeah, so you're an advocate of big government, correct? I am not, sir. <laughs> but I don't want to eat pork chops that had hair on them. No, I, I also don't want to be on a yacht with a guy who's in charge of making sure Sandy can drive out of the fucking uh, dock no, listen, and not I, kill me. I, I fucking I love government. I love all these things that keep us safe. They're vitally important. But, you know, let's call a spade a spade. These guys are dorks. I mean, they're entire... It's like you go into an airport and you're happy the TSA is there, right? Because they're patting down people. And what would we do if everybody had big, big bottles of shampoo on flights? But... The people that get those jobs are just inherently, they're a little bit, they're fucking, you know, they're door, they're misers. No, no, you you also have to be a complete asshole that you can completely shut off Mm -hmm. your empathy for potentially someone going like, okay, he's going to get his, uh, you know, he'll get his things in order. Actually, this guy seemed rather nice. Yeah, he did. When I owned one of my companies, I had a bunch of fucking uh, by the book assholes come through and basically like they own my own business the way they talk to me. Well, speaking of assholes, uh, let's take a break and let's read a couple of iTunes ratings and reviews. We told you guys last week and the week before that we would do this. I am very sorry that we haven't done it. But I think it's vitally important to tell people that we need your help in the review section. Because, Patrick, what happens in the review section? Well, as far as re- reviews that people we want... People leave reviews. Oh, yeah, they leave yeah. reviews. And Dylan and I prefer uh, either one stars or five stars. So here's the five star. Oh, this nice. is great. This is from super user uh, 987 oh, that That's a great one. Not going to read the whole thing, but two dudes doing it right. They remind me of what a recap conversation with my husband would be if he actually enjoyed watching the soap opera that is below deck. Nice. That is a great review. Yeah. A really great review. This one, not so much. No? Okay. This one is from Jenny867. 5309. What's she have to say? Is that the song? 8675309. That's the song. Very original, Jenny. 8675309. This is called the title. I love the title. It's just no. No. Okay. One star. That usually isn't going to be good for us when that's the title. No, it's not. It's one star. I started listening because they seem to be getting guests from the show, and that's great. We're going to have more guests coming on, right? But Dylan is the worst. His vo- <laughs> he interrupts Patrick. His oh. voice is dull and grating. He pretends to care about people, but he's just afraid of being canceled. And this is what I wanted to get to. He's a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> <laughs> Although Pat tries to stop him from espousing his garbage. I know he's anti-vax. <laughs> I mean. Boy, they know you. I got so many shots. I I don't know. This is this is why we need to do this because we have really no recourse. You know, you can write to Apple, but it's they'll really only you know help. Dylan got eighteen <laughs> boosters, and I'm like, 
<laughs> what did you do today? You already have 17. You anti-vaxxer. So, okay. yeah, jump in the iTunes, ratings, reviews, leave five stars, kind words. Um, don't leave one. We don't want any more ones. Help us out. Mm. All right, let's get back to the show. Okay. So, um, Ruin is called up to the gallows. We'll call it the gallows for him because every time he is brought to the higher tiers of the uh, the boat, he is not delivering a good performance because he's he's in the middle of a web of lies. Mm -hmm. uh, the MCA says... You, we've got a bit of a problem here because you don't have original licenses. So, essentially, you have five days to get them here. All right, so this is the leniency. They would allow him to leave the deck on this boat for that interim period. Now, that is seems fair to me. Yeah, also insane. Because Lenient. Given someone that kind of, that kind of room, you could discover later on that he'd actually used a photo of a bald man. <laughs> it looks nothing like him. Yeah, and you don't know if he killed that man or not. You know, it's like that uh, that one guy, that one murderer who took pictures of the people and you thought they were alive, but they weren't. He had oh, just sewed their so eyes weird. open. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that scary? It's terrible. Ruin could be doing something like that. So let's move on to Jessica. She likes people. She's a strong second stew because she is a good follower. That is what you need. In a second, Stu. Now, it's interesting, Dylan, because we get a little background on her being a follower. She says she had a best friend who was uh, <clears throat> the life of the party and also always knew what to do. And I thought at this point in the story, uh, she was going to tell us that her friend lost her head in a bad bungee jumping incident. But she didn't, thank God. The reason she was telling us this was to drive home the point that she's a follower. Yeah. Kind of sad. They even had pictures of the friend. I'm like, okay, what happened to her? That friend seems like a Regina George character. And the poor Jessica was driven into the ground by her. Various <laughs> high school pressures. Mm -hmm. It's really messy when you're a young kid. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so Lara is happy to be on yachts because she is not so much fleeing from the pain, but fleeing from a different kind of life. I don't know what that note fucking means. I can tell you, she was fucking taking nose dives into cow shit in South Africa. Oh, that's right. That's right. How could I have forgotten that she tells a whimsical Shire-like tale of her diving into mounds of various different colored f fucking feces and I think the producer says that you can catch serious strains of bacteria. And she says, well, I, it never went in any holes. Um, I really don't think, I, I feel like skin is too porous, you know? But kids do the darndest things. Oh, you drink off garden hoses. That, that could kill you too, man. Yeah. Not as quickly, though, as diving in mounds of shit. I mean, that is really something else. You know, it's like the first, uh, one of the early scenes in Tommy Boy, but um, but that's like a comedy, you know? Right. It's not real. It's not real. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyways, I, th this is what I'm saying. She has MVP caliber stuff to her. She's oh. just hilarious. Um, so Natalia and Captain Sandy have a little chat. Mm -hmm. Sandy says, what happened to Storm? You're asking me about my dating life. Leave me alone. Yeah. But well, they get to talking about open relationships. Open relationships. And well, Sandy's like, oh, I hope that works out. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so then, Rue, we, we get a meanwhile oh, here. By the way, did we point out, uh, it's worth mentioning at least with the cr uh, chron chronology. Are we stumbling a little bit here? I feel no, like no, we're stumbling a little all. bit. Not at all. It's just Ruin right now, I hadn't been convinced that anything was that weird. Okay? So at this point, he has called his roommate. Uh, yeah. who has those documents in his apartment and he's going to work on getting them mailed here. Okay. And, and it's important to note that he's not calling his roommate. He's leaving voice memos for his roommate, mm. which is a, it's a, it's a minor detail, but it reeks of somebody who's not really that concerned about getting the ball over the line. And also a minor detail that if you didn't know the ending of the movie, uh, you would have just, uh, you know, right. just glossed over, yeah. you know, the serial killer. You're like, 
oh, maybe he's uh, he's a chef. That's why he has all those knives. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's like you got to watch Arrival a couple times for it to really hit you, you know? <laughs> I hate that movie. <laughs> oh, do you? Yeah, I do. Uh, okay, so well, that's because you don't get it. <laughs> Uh, all right, so um, Rue needs to get his licenses. Provisions arrive. The chef uh, evidently had a developmental disorder that he got over at the age of eight. That is what the, you know, people in the northern kind of fingers of the United Kingdom, they're made of tough stuff. You have some kind of mental disorder when you're a kid. You just tough through it. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody hits you over the head with a bottle of Buckfast, and then you're just changed. I forget i listened to a podcast today uh where the podcast host had a famous comedian from ireland on yeah and he was kind of joking because this podcaster was from california he's like you know you guys over in america are all emotional working out your feelings trying to be better people and he openly admitted in ireland like we're not fucking there yet the the filthy scouser literally says that he just didn't say anything really until he was eight years old (laughs) but he's blossomed um so Brooke. She arrives. The heiress to Sprouts Grocers hits the boat. Um, She is a deckhand who has worked on smaller boats, Mm -hmm. but really just like day charters, which are just not even in the same fucking league as this. And that, by the way, that is so ambiguous. That could be in long beach. You can go for a whale watching expedition. I just went on one last week. Like she's on those. She could be there. Yeah. Yeah. And this boat weighs 500 pounds. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very big boat. Um, I don't know what the fuck this industry is like how this is. You would think that with a piece of machinery this large and with this much liability, she's not on deck, but still, I mean. It's terrifying, quite frankly. She's just an aloof one percenter that you've just allowed onto this (laughs) boat. I mean, people could die. I don't understand it. The bosun is doing some kind of born identity forgery. I mean, what the fuck is going on? So, Rue calls a deck crew meeting. Sandy hops over the walkie. I'd like to join that, actually. And then she uh, puts Rue through the... uh, The distance check. Yeah. I love this. This is what I actually meant to point out in my thoughts and nots. This was was really what I was giving the thumbs up to for Sandy, because I was like, all right. I didn't realize she was being Sherlock Holmes at this point, but I do think there was definitely an element of that. Yeah. She goes, all right, how far is that uh, boat from our boat? And he shouts out... 100 made us 75. <laughs> yeah. Then Luca's like, no, it's 50. And, and that's, then, uh, that's. And then Regis Philbin, stage left. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but that, yeah, no, that should have been your first tell, like, what the fuck is going on? I love how she's like, uh, later on in the episode, she sees that the person on his not licenses his pieces of paper are not him and she's like this is a giant red flag that's not a red flag that's like the (laughs) ied has gone off and your fucking legs are blown that's not a red flag we're here now that's not a warning uh all right so this is also my favorite part with sandy the captain's meeting dylan yeah may i give a rundown of this sandy does the uh do's and don'ts Mostly the don'ts that have plagued uh, her boat and this franchise. Don't do drugs. Oh, yeah. Hi, Hannah. No drinking on charter. Hi, Camille. (laughs) Hi, Margo. Hi, Filthy Scouser. (laughs) Hi, Queen of the Sea. Hi, pretty much anybody. Hey, Captain Lee. And Captain Lee. Allegedly. All of them. Uh, And no racist comments. I love that we have progressed. But it's sad to know that that needs to be explicitly said. (laughs) Yeah, we got to cover our bases here, but it is a a sad state of affairs out on the the ocean waters that you have to make sure people know that it's inappropriate to say racist things. Mm. Thank you, Heather. Uh, All right, so... Um, uh, we need to get to the preference sheet meeting. Oh, well, let me see if I can call our uh, former producer. Yeah, I hope he's not too busy. 
Well, he might be. He said he was at a soccer game with his kids, so we can't give him too much shit. What, like an Angel City game, something like that? No, I think that his kids were playing. Oh, but you can take a call. Hey. Hey, man, sorry. Uh, are you available to do the preference sheet meeting? Yeah. yeah oh. I can do it. oh, great. Okay. Ask him on. if he's eaten anything. Uh, Dylan right. wants to know if you've eaten anything. Uh, I'm just sitting down for tacos right now. There you go. What kind of tacos? What kind of tacos? Um, like a le- le- homemade lettuce lettuce cup tacos. Ugh. Sounds delicious. All right, uh, Kalen, thank you for your time tonight. So uh, whenever you're ready. Oh, will you ask him what kind of meat are in the tacos? You're talking over him. Yeah, no, All right, no. start over. I'm sorry. I, I don't think that's okay. Right. okay. Go ahead, Kalen. First charter of the season, seven guests. Primary is Dr. <laughs> Kian Karimi. Yeah. He's a personal friend of Captain Sandy's as well as her doctor. When Sandy was in a car crash a few years ago, she couldn't close her right eye all the way. Dr. Karimi took the skin from her left eye, added it to the right, fixed her right up. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. He turned 40 uh, over the pandemic, and he's finally second? excited to be able to celebrate in style with his friends, all of which are boys. Natalia's favorite. Uh, uh, hey, guess, hey, Kay, can I ask you something yes, real quick? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, are you charging us for this? No. no oh, okay. okay. All right. Okay, uh, great. Is, yeah, this is just out of the good of uh, my okay, uh, great. time. Okay, okay. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, guests want access to all water toys, so as soon as the anchors <laughs> dropped, water toys come out. Uh, dinner night one, primary celebrating his birthday. He wants a coastal Italian meal and to have Captain Sandy join. Yeah. And that concludes the preference sheet meeting. How do you think you did? Uh, solid eight. I don't think so. Hey, I think he did a great job. Kalen, what kind of, <laughs> uh, what kind of meat are in the tacos? Turkey. Oh, yes. Turkey tacos. Man of my own. Kid's getting healthy. The kid is getting healthy. Turkey tacos in lettuce wraps. My God. Uh, Kaylin, you want to plug anything? Water uh, cooler. Water cooler podcast. Check it out. It's fun. Water cooler podcast. <coughs> Check it out. You, <coughs> I think there's right. two, two episodes. All right. Uh, have, a, have fun with your family. Bye. See you guys. Bye. Uh, all right, um, we move on past the preference sheet meeting and we venture into a night when we get a horrific call. Ruin's best friend was killed in a head-on collision <laughs> with a bus. Now, I will go ahead and be, be the a, asshole. The cynical but, son uh, of a bitch. This... What do you think I was going to say? Uh, you I was just going to say this is just concocted. a horrible... No, I was going to say it's a horrible, painful thing. How how dare you even float that? Oh, well, let, let me be the cynical uh, okay, son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's l- a likelihood that this was made up maybe to take not, the heat off him. Maybe not a likelihood, but there's a chance that it was made up. He was c- really, really crying. Now, fucking cough syrup addicts are pretty manipulative people, so who knows? I think it was probably real, and he's just having a really, really bad spell in his life, but... Given his fraudulent behavior, there is a chance that he is this fucking bad. Uh, okay, I think that my opinion of him has been by the multiple uh, messages that I received this morning about some of his uh, past activities. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, and that may have colored my perception of this. A- and particular listen, I didn't want to make it. Uh, I don't want to do this thing where like. I felt the bit was pretty clear that we both felt the exact same thing, but I, I don't want to do the thing where I'm like putting you as the the bad guy. Oh. We both thought that there is a likelihood that this could be concocted. But his if tears it was not, were so real, though. Well, have you ever met someone that's very manipulative? Yes, they can turn it on, man. Yes, I have. But I, you know, I apologize if this was in fact a a, a real tragedy. But yes, um, we, very very sad. We can only recap the show based on what we see. Yeah, mm-hmm. and what C Rats send Patrick in direct message inbox. Correct. Yep. Uh, all right. What happens next? Oh well, it's worth mentioning. Luca so was, sad. Though, Luca was huh? there to comfort him. Gosh. Mm-hmm. Luca's Luca is such a lovely, lovely guy. I was going to say lovely little guy, and that's I don't need to do that. Yeah. Hey, I do want to say this is, and this has happened in many reality TV shows. Again, this just colors my thoughts on, on ruin and what's real and what's not real here. If your best friend just died, wouldn't you just get off this goddamn television show? That's what I show? was wondering when we get to the next day, he's still having a hard time in the morning. And I'm just like, I, listen, these sea rats have a certain amount of gumption and they are running away from things that are very painful, but 
kudos to you for sticking it out. I mean, I would be fucking off that boat in a heartbeat. Uh, if I was The Bachelor, ABC's The Bachelor, and yeah. they said that you, uh, I don't know, you got your, you fucking died or somehow, I would leave The Bachelor to come console your family. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a... Well, not if I was The Bachelor. I mean, it's, the, it's a pretty big deal. But if I was definitely on like Winter House or something like that, I'd be out of there in a second. Oh, yeah, no. Winter House is... That doesn't really help anybody. You know, at least if when you're on The Bachelor, you get to go on Kimmel and Good Morning America. Don't forget Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. I've always wanted to do the cha-cha. You know, there's lots of places you can go out dancing. Not in front of 20 million people, Dylan. Oh, you need that, that big of an audience, huh? Mm-hmm. And you think 20 million people are watching Dancing with Stars. What is it called? Dancing with the Stars. Dancing with the Stars. That show. Um, all right. Gosh. What's a better show, Dancing with the Stars or The Masked Singer? <laughs> uh, all right. So, um, uh, sweating like a horn church, and we get to getting ready for the guest arrival. They'll be there in 30 minutes, and then they arrive. Natalia pulls a little flirty move with Luca. Oh, did you see that? Can you help me with my epaulets? Natalie, you can you can do your own epaulets. I like it, though. Yeah. It's starting to heat up there. Uh, big time. The guests have had 20 Michelin stars in their European vacation, <laughs> so Scouser, get ready. Great. You are special. I appreciate that you need to humble brag this. That uh, is so many Michelin stars. There's such amazing food that's not in the Michelin guide. To get that many Michelin stars on a vacation, I just don't want to eat like that. Mm. You know? Because it's uh, obviously the Michelin guide is expanded to more approachable fare, but there are, uh, there's a lot of Michelin dining that's just it's just too stuffy. You want to go to a run-down steakhouse in Florence. You don't want to go to some hoity-toity place where they have stools for your purses and there are, you know, Taiwanese dignitaries sitting next to you, you know? Dylan, I want to focus my attention on this, this too formal. primary. Yeah. Okay. Why do you feel the need to have to brag like that openly? Just say we've eaten at a lot of good places. We've had a wonderful culinary experience while we've been here. Our, our standards are very high, jokingly. Or say none of that and just go, we like to eat, so, you know. Just, Knock it out of the park. Yeah, don't be an asshole I, about sorry it. Sorry to be a jerk. I don't know how long we've been going, but uh, this is why I hate Heather DeBro and Terry DeBro. All they do on their reality shows is brag about their wealth. They disgust me. I saw um, my wife was watching uh, OC, which is bad, right? Uh, it's kind of good, bad. I don't understand why some of those people are still on that show. They and have a they have a uh, an entire like fridge of Veuve Clicquot, like yes, floor to ceiling Veuve Clicquot. Yeah, that's a fifty dollar bottle of champagne. So congratulations. Well, I'm sure they have different vintages that are much more expensive than that. But also, you know, fucking find a high high ledge. Mm. Uh, so we move on to some other document stuff. Uh, uh, yes. Rue is not the only not only a boatswain but also an identity thief. Um, Captain Sandy sits him down and asks, um, where did you get these fraudulent licenses and why is there some other man on the fraudulent and license? And why doesn't he have hair? Yeah. And Rue, I, I, you know, it, going back and rewashing it is really the best way to see just how bad he tries to get out of this wet paper bag. But he's, he just stumbles through it so horribly we well, lies about a sea rat school because we, we... I was on a boat in Monaco. You mean you were in a classroom? Like, what are you fucking saying? Mm. But he's fucked up, dude. He's on downers right now. I mean, well, allegedly, just, yeah. allegedly. Mm -hmm. No, nah, I mean, he, he seemed pretty lucid. I mean, stupid, but lucid in this situation. Mm -hmm. But this is one of those things where I don't know how people... Got it. Did a mosquito just land on something inanimate? I mean, that is a rarity. Is it? I don't even think I got it. That's how slow I am. <laughs> we got to shut these doors. I know. Get I will bit up. Show. Um, yeah. So, anyways, this is uh, this is a pathetic performance from Rue trying to get out of this lie. And this is when Sandy says, "This is a giant red flag." And again, I would say this is more akin to what Jason did with the boat. 
than a red flag. This is you running through a dock of people and into numerous restaurants. Mm-hmm. It's not so much a warning. Um, well, so-, so she tells him, pack his shit. Uh, until we get all this worked out, maybe you can uh, rejoin us on a Tinder uh, while we're out at sea. But for now, you need to get the fuck out. Uh, so we get our first meal. Wouldn't be below deck without a caprese salad. We've also got quinoa and kale and beet salad. Uh, these people are Michelin star diners. So, of course, they want caprese salad and quinoa and kale and beets, right? Because, um, you know, does Jinkies Cafe have a Michelin star? <laughs> yeah, I think they do. Yeah. That's why they expanded to two locations in Studio City. Yeah. So we also have some gnarled lamb chops, um, lollipops cut very thick, almost too thick to where they are not lollipops. Um, and Branzino, we also get a pasta dish. Um, I'm joking around. Obviously, this is chuggy below deck fare but um you know it's first meal i thought he did a great job and it is lunch too and it's lunch you know i the 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 guests seem to like it that's the only thing that matters <clears throat> so luca heads up and the chiron hits the scream provisional bosun that is how you get promoted in this game mm-hmm. the chiron lets you know that you have just got arrived a bump. yeah yeah he she promotes him to temp bosun um, yeah. And to remind the audience, previously he was supposed to be living in the bottom of the boat, unclogging toilets and making sure the fucking boat doesn't tip over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, because he's good looking, he'll be in charge of making sure this boat um, doesn't sink. Well, and also Captain Jason said he was okay, so. Of course. Yeah. We just take people at their word. Uh, all right, meanwhile. Meanwhile. You stop me when you want to. Okay. Brooke, the temp, arrows to sprouts, doesn't know how to fold socks. Haley talks to Rue about how he's leaving, but how he's coming back. Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he says, I'll just, I just, I just got to get a few more licenses and the tender is going to bring me back. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the guest drops a phone in the jacuzzi. That was very good. I want to say that Luca and Sandy at some point during those meanwhiles, I believe in the timeline laid out a plan to leave the dock, uh, and not killing anybody. And I hate to spoil the drama for everyone. It's like telling a six year old Santa doesn't exist, but Sandy is a TV captain, she could be sleeping while the boat was moving. Uh, it's going to make its way out of that dock. Yep. Don't you worry about yep, that. Yep, yep, yep. Mm. And, and, and this is what this show does. It never ceases to do unsafe things that are miraculously anticlimactic. So we have a boat, the biggest we've ever had, no bosun, one man down. And yeah, of course, it, it just gets out. It leaves. It's, it leaves. It, it's it, a gigantic uh, gateway to exit that, uh, yeah. that area there. You know, uh, season one, Dylan and I are covering, uh, covering on patreon.com slash another podcast network. Yeah. Captain Lee, that boat was anchored in the uh, some little port in the Caribbean. He literally had six feet on both sides of that vessel yeah. to get out of there. Now, yeah. that was compelling television, sure. uh, boat leaving a dock. Sure, and still anticlimactic. True. And not compelling. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, so the boat heads out, Dylan, and then it's nighttime, and that's when Luca lets us know he's shitting himself. And then he adds... This quote, he says, well, I'll fake it till I make it, yep. which uh, you've heard me say this. If you, uh, you want a job at the Gap uh, and you kind of trump up your resume that you've uh, made all these sales of jeans and whatnot. Yeah, you worked at Urban Outfitters feel, before this. Feel free to lean on fake it till you make it. Um, you're in charge of a vessel that could kill 29 people while they sleep. Uh, feel free to hold that uh I'll fake it till I make it. Yeah, because what's the worst thing that happens at Gap if you're faking it till you make it? Jenna Lyons walks in and starts asking you about hems. Nobody's going to die. But Luca, he might kill people. Mm -hmm. And speaking of faking it till you make it, um, he says if you fuck up on this boat, you're going to be on the news. We know somebody who is on the news. (laughs) You know. Those beautiful big blue eyes. Um, all right, so uh, the Scouser has big f- shoes to fill, evidently. Uh, yes. Well, yes. Kind yes, of. Yes. You know, Dave was fine. Dave was great. Can't hold to a scheduled Kind of cancels a lot on people. <laughs> you know, he kind of cancels a lot on people, and it's, mm-hmm. it's the kind of thing where it's like, you know, we don't really need to have you on, you know? It's not going to do a ton for us. So. I think the rule of never announcing a sea rat's <laughs> going to be in the studio in any given week until they actually show up here and we can touch them. Uh, all right, so Sandy sits down for dinner, 
and a story is told. She says, I was a upstanding citizen until I was given a 714 mm-hmm. Quaalude. <laughs> Were you like a fucking commodities trader? Like, how do you, what, what happened? Somebody gave you a fucking Quaalude, and I, I listen, I guess that's how things happen. It's just so funny that Sandy with that haircut and i know that she was on the straight and narrow but she probably had that haircut for a while the thought of her just getting fucked up on quaaludes running through lesbians is just amazing i kind of wish she was back there but i'm happy she's not for her yeah well there's a cameo where she was back there for a minute um I appreciate her honesty, and I also appreciate that unlike some of the captains, Captain Hot Pants, Captain Lee, she is willing to sit down for dinner and share. Yeah. Although I will open, openly say that I, I felt a lot of the guests were bummed out by that story. I'm kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and the food hit the table. They didn't even get to say what it was because Sandy was in the middle of her bummer sobriety story. Mm-hmm. But, you know, she's being honest. She's sharing. She's a good seat at the table. Jason's just like, you know, I mean, he just doesn't add that much. He's hot. But the dish is seared tuna, Thai ginger dressing, pickled quail egg, and later will be a uh, chocolate cake. Um, Fine. 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 62 pots. Mm. And again, I think they're not showing us courses. Maybe I missed it, but it's astounding to me that you either have one course and a dinner after binge drinking for an entire day, or you have 15 courses and people There's are no throwing up. That's true. There's no middle ground. You know, it's just wild. I also, let's give the young lad uh, a little bit of room here. Uh, he sure. He probably spent half the preparation of whatever meal trying to find where the fucking steak knives yeah, are. Yeah, 100%. Uh, so we find out that Brooke's dad started Sprouts. And he's um, dead. Oh, okay. Um, we we kind of have a lot of winding down time towards the end of the episode. Yes. Rue gives Sandy a call. He says, uh, hey, uh, Captain, I'm not going to be um, coming back. Uh, yeah, we know. Mm-hmm. Uh, she goes, hey, well, those licenses, they're on the way to the boat, right? He goes, oh, no, you know, I told my friend not to send him because he's far. And he doesn't exist. <laughs> so uh, Natalia and Jess get into a little tiff. Uh, there is a list that has been prepared for the Sprouts heiress. Um, Jess wants Natalia to give her said list. Natalia thinks it's going to overwhelm her. Hey, Jess. Let's... Pipe it down. Pipe it down. Let's pipe okay, it down. Okay, this is the bit. first day. Let's. I know you're trying to make some good TV here, make some waves, but uh, I know when it's uh, a little Let's uh, pipe little, it down, a little too much, you a little know? too early. I thought okay? you said you were good at following. Let's pipe it down a little bit, okay? Mm. Next day we awake and we find out that we are not going to get a bosun for another two, two weeks. weeks. Norma, you bitch. That's it for us. Everybody, jump in the iTunes ratings reviews. Join us on Patreon for Love is Blind. Um, Golden Bachelor coming to Bad TV. Search us out on YouTube. Um, that's going to be the only place you can find the video. So Godspeed for everybody. We'll put it in the show notes. There love, you go. Love you very much. Follow us on socials. Give Pat hugs. Give me Pat hugs. We'll see you next week. I'm Dylan saying goodbye. Pat, say goodbye. Bye.